Welcome uh, to today's episode um, of Mr. Kuchma talking about scientific journals. So this is a really important um, section of content for grade 11 and 12 students in the sciences, um, especially if you're ever going to be um, going into post-secondary at college or university level, you're going to be doing a, a lot of analysis on peer-reviewed articles. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that today. So this is an introduction um, into what you'll have to complete um, in this little section. So we are looking right now at, a, uh, at an academic journal. Um, it's called Improving Peppermint Essential Oil Yield and Composition by Metabolic Engineering. So right now there is a huge push um, for non-GMO products. So if you go to Costco, Superstore, or Choices, wherever it might be, um, it's a very hot topic that you will see stuff labeled non-GMO. And for the most part, that's actually a really great thing. Um, there's a lot of things that can go wrong in genetic uh, modification. And sometimes I think we as humans go to too great of extremes. Um, you know, we want the largest um, strawberry um, possible with the least amount of, um, you know, work to get them. And, you know, if you if you see the ones that you buy in the store, you know, they can be like this big. And then if you look at them in the wild, um, which uh, I've been on seen in the wild, and they're like, you know, this big. Um, but interestingly enough, this is actually, uh, this is an article by uh, uh, a researcher or a group of researchers, but um, I actually know Sohail um, Ahoud. He was my university professor in third year biochemistry at UBCO, which is where I graduated from. And he is a uh, genetic modifier and um, he does some pretty cool work. And he was trying to um, find different ways of causing peppermint to create more of its essential oil um, so they can have a higher yield and in turn be able to um, market that. Um, he has done some research on irritable bowel syndrome, um, IBS, and uh, menthol, which is the uh, active ingredient in, um, in peppermint, uh, really helps it. So he's been researching that. It's, it's uh, pretty cool. So um, if you read through, at the very top of any um, academic journal, there's going to be an abstract. And lots of times, ac academic journals um, uh, are not free to the public to view. Um, they actually cost a lot of money if you want to um, view all the research. And I'm going to explain that a little bit more later. Um, but uh, no matter what, they will always post an abstract uh, available. And oftentimes, if there's a journal that, that's um, you know for sale, they put the abstract out there to try to get you interested in it. Like They want you to buy this article to learn more about it. Um, if you uh, go to university, so um, when I was at UBCO, um, you actually get uh, a subscription to tons and tons and tons of academic journals, which is awesome. Uh, and you'll be able to access that um, when you go to university. So that was really cool. I got to do lots of research. So anyway, at the top of an academic journal is the abstract, which basically just gives you a quick um, sort of hook into what their research was, um, what they were doing. And then as you go down, they're gonna have um, sort of like an introduction. This is probably like an introduction. Um, this one's got results and discussion. So what actually happened? Um, usually that accompanies um, or graphs accompany this section and um, there's tables. So let's see if I click that. Yeah, it takes me to the table. Um, and it talks about all the different things that they did. We're not gonna do a huge analysis of this one. Um, this time, I just wanna show you um, what it looks like. It shows the materials and methods that they used. So their plant growth con, uh, conditions and um, you know so on and so forth, their transcript analysis. Um, I'm just gonna still scroll down. And then they've got uh, acknowledgements, um, footnotes, um, references. References is huge. Um, you'll see there's so many references uh, in an academic journal. Uh, just keeps going so 50 for this one um so if i go back up to the top um i just i'm actually gonna 
pop over a little bit here. But a peer-reviewed article, what it is, is it's an article that's written by an expert. So, you know, people who are in university, you can write them, um, you know, with your PhD, with your master's. Uh, you can do them even before that if you're um, helping someone out. I know some of my friends, um, uh, they got published uh, because they were helping out their university professor on a project. But then it's reviewed by several other experts in the field before that article is published. And that's the big thing. So peer reviewed is they've done some research, they've submitted it so that other professionals can look to see what that's about and if it's correct. And that ensures the article's quality. Um, there is a huge list of scientific journals um, and you can search through um, different fields um, you know, chemistry ones, and life science, which is the ones that um, pertain to us, engineering, math, so on and so forth. But there's some general and multidisciplinary sciences. And if you get into um, academic journals, you'll notice that they have impact factors. And impact factors, um, at the bottom of this, um, I was showing it to you, they have all the lists of um, references. So these are the people that they referenced. They referenced 50 different articles. Whenever someone else referenced your uh, work, then it's sort of like, oh, you've written something that's interesting, that's good, and someone else is using your research, some of your findings um, for future for future work. So if your article gets cited by a lot of other people, that means you did a really good job. And it has a higher impact factor. So in the world, there is one huge um, leading force, nature, uh, sorry, two leading forces in science. Um, that's literally what they're called, nature and science. And if you can get published into nature or science, you are doing really, really good. Um, so you can see that they do not have open access um, to their, to their uh um, publications. You do have to purchase them and they can be quite pricey. Other ones, yes, um, they are free and some of them, you know, partial or by request um, or after two years, six months. So some of them have different um, ways of um, making them have open access. But nature and science are huge. They got started in, this in 1869. Um, science in 1880, they've been around for a long time. They've been publishing um, some really big stuff. So um, a couple of my uh, university professors actually at uh, UBCO did get published in Nature on their, um, on their work with mycorrhizal fungi. So if you want to ever find out about that, you can come and talk to me. But they found that in root systems of vascular plants that there was this interesting population of fungus, of this mycorrhizal fungus. And they found that it was a symbiotic relationship where... Um, uh, I won't get into it, but there's a mic there's a, a symbiotic relationship where the the plant is able to um, and you should know this. Um, so plants are autotrophs, so they can take um, sunlight and convert it into energy and byproducts, um, whereas fungus can't. They are not autotrophs; they are heterotrophs, and so. Um, they have this great ability where the fungus is able to provide the nutrients that the plant needs, and the plant is also able to provide the nutrients that the fungus need. So they have this really, really cool relationship, and uh, these researchers at UBCO um, kind of like figured this out and did a lot of research on it, and yeah, they were published in Nature, and it was, uh, it was a really big thing back when I was there uh, about 10 years ago. So if you take a look, uh, if I just click on science, I wonder if it'll take me there. Um, this is kind of what it looks like. Um, I'm going to take you. Um, what sometimes they will do is they will have like a shortened article. So this here is actually, um, you know, a, a readable article that someone without their PhD can understand. And um, it's really great because this is the kind of um, article that you or I could read and understand um, very easily. Um, so this one um, is on uh, blood types and how there's actually a gut bacteria that can create um, type O blood 
from A and AB and AB positive and all those types of blood types. Um, so that's a really crazy um, uh, discovery. And that could be a really um, big thing because if people are donating their blood in A or B or AB positive or, you know, any of those, any of those types, they would be able to potentially strip um, off the antigens and then make it O um, blood and then O blood can be donated to anyone, um, which would be pretty cool. I for one, I for one am a blood donor, um, but my blood type is AB positive. So AB positive can only give to other AB positive. However, I'm the universal recipient, so I can take blood from anyone, um, but I can only give to myself or types of myself, whereas O negative can give it to everyone. So that's a little um, snippet. Um, just to give you uh, an idea though, so this is um, the article um, that someone published about this discovery um, just recently here in June, 2019. But the, the actual journal that it comes from is this, an enzymatic pathway in the human gut microbe that converts A to universal O type blood. So if you take a look, this is the peer reviewed article. Um, and you can see at the top, there is an abstract, um, and then it goes into an introduction. Um, there's all these crazy graphs, which um, honestly, I'd have to take a long time for me to actually figure out what they're about. Um, and then if we scroll down, doo -doo 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 -doo, there's their methods of how they did everything. And then, Here's the references. So I, I missed it. I thought there was a conclusion. Usually there's like a little, let me look if I missed it. Protein purification. Hmm. No, it just goes right from methods into a sort of end um, ethics statement. Anyway, but they have tons and tons of references as well. They've got all their acknowledgments. And then they even have um, some data about their about their research participants and things like that. So it's really interesting um, how in depth these um, science journals um, can go. So the reason why I am even going through all of this with you is because in the new um, curriculum, uh, one of the things that students need to do is exercise a healthy informed skepticism and uh, use scientific knowledge and findings to form their own investigations and to evaluate claims in primary and secondary sources. Um, you know, to criti critically analyze the validity of information in primary and secondary sources and evaluate the approaches used to solve them. And I think that it's really important that um, you as a student um, learn to, to see, um, you know, that something that's posted on Facebook in a weird little article that someone might not be <laughs> quite as accurate as something written in a scientific journal uh, in science or in nature. And um, that is sort of my background here to, um, you know, the different types of articles. Um, some articles uh, look very different and are more historic, um, such as this one on vaccines, and it's sort of a history of vaccines. Um, but yeah, every journal will um, definitely you know, have a lot of information. And I do want you to be able to glean some information from an abstract. That's gonna be my biggest thing because those are gonna be the things that are always accessible to you, um, no matter what. And oh, I was gonna show you that. Um, so if you wanted to, this is on science, and if you wanted to um, go beyond the abstract, so this is the abstract, and you wanted to take a look at, is there a button where it says full text? This is just the this is just the abstract. If I want to, hmm. usually an a, an article is about thirty dollars though, um, and subscriptions you can get annual subscriptions and things like that that are a little bit more. Um, let's go to the current issue. Let's see if I can find. This is the one that I was just looking at. Oh, and if I think if I if I go back, 
and I click full text. So if I go to the full text, um, there should be, basically you have to subscribe. So this, I just wanted to show that not all journal articles are free. Um, so Hales uh, was, it's in a journal that is free. Um, so this one, we, you can view the whole thing online. Whereas if you did want to view this one in science on genotype to phenotype, which actually is interesting, uh, it does relate to this course, um, you'd have to pay for it. So anyway, I hope that this has just been um, an interesting uh, little lesson on what academic journals are, what peer reviewed articles are. And from here, you guys are going to be doing some analysis on them and and we'll go from there. So best of luck as you move forward. Take care.